So welcome to this water ritual celebrating St. Mother Theodore Guerin, the eighth American saint and the foundress of the Sisters of Providence of St. Mary the Woods, Indiana. It's not often that we get to raise up a saint who is somebody whose land many of us have walked. We come together as the seasons change, as the climate changes, as hurricanes threaten lives and lands, as politic and political choices threaten democracy, as war devastates people and cultures, as guns kill innocent ones, and as so much is in need of love, mercy, and justice. And in the midst of all of this, we take time to hear the inspiring story of a woman who met the challenges of her day by putting faith in divine providence. October 3rd is the feast day of St. Mother Theodore Guerin and October 22nd is the foundation day of the community that she founded in 1840. So October's her month. Oak leaves are all around the home of St. Mary of the Woods where she lived and walked and where some of us on this screen have walked and lived. So I brought some oak leaves tonight and if you have some, hold them up so we can see them. They're all over my yard. Oh, we have some beautiful colored oaks. And I also have a statue of Mother Theodore that Teresa Clark, who is the artist who created the statue of Mother Theodore, um, inscribed this one to my daughter for her first communion. So this is a very special one in our household of Mother Theodore. She'll uh, appear on our screen shortly. So we gather tonight to give thanks for this holy and wise determined and courageous woman. We gather to hear her story and to be inspired to walk in providence with her as we face the challenges of our day. So this is the statue that I just held up. It's by Teresa Clark and this one is located at the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in Washington, DC. There's a similar one at St. Mary of the Woods. The one there is in bronze. This one is in Indiana limestone. When Mother Theodore was a child, she liked to pray among the rocks on the seashore where she could look out upon the vast expanse of water near her home in Brittany, France. For her, the sea was the symbol of eternity and her early connection with heaven. So think about your favorite place to pray. And when you've captured it, type it into the chat. I'm just gonna read them out loud and you can read them and follow them along. In the garden, the ocean and any water, in the woods, the prayer corner in my bedroom next to me now, during a sunset or sunrise, 
Wherever I am in the moment in my favorite is my favorite place to pray. By a mountain brook, stream with water running over the boulders. Loretto Mary Holm on Lake Simcoe, Ontario. Backyard. I like to slip into the parish church in mid-afternoon and no one is around. My living room with my wife. Treasure your space. And as we listen to this song, let me tell you that all of these pictures that you're about to see were captured by my friend Joni Luna, who is a sister of Providence. I feel you in my heart, I feel you in my hands, I feel you in the stars, I feel you in the sand, I feel you everywhere, inside every cell, there is no place here that you do not dwell, I feel you everywhere. I feel you in my arms, I feel you in my feet, I feel you in the eyes of everyone I meet, I feel you everywhere, inside every cell, there is no place here that you do not dwell, I feel you everywhere. I feel you in the clouds, I feel you in the storm, I feel you in the cold, I feel you in the warm. There is nowhere I can go and not find you. I feel you.
feel you when I pray. I feel you everywhere. Inside every cell, there is no place here that you do not dwell. I feel you everywhere. I feel you. And now we have the story of Mother Theodore. Growing up in Brittany, France, put yourself gently in the hands of Providence, says Mother Theodore Guerin. Anne Therese Guerin was born in Etable, France on October 2nd, 1798. At birth, she was consecrated to the Blessed Virgin Mary and was always dressed in white or blue until she was 10 years old, the, the year she made her first communion. She grew up in Brittany, the Celtic part of France and was homeschooled by her mother. Her father, an officer in the French Navy, was killed by bandits on his way home when she was 15 years old. She lost two baby brothers, one in a house fire that Aunt Therese escaped and the other in a bed fire. All of this left her mother bereft. After these tragic incidents, she took charge of the family home and garden and cared for her sick mother and younger sister. Anne Therese entered the Sisters of Providence of Rouillet-sur-Loire, France in 1823, when she was 25 years old. She educated children and received a Medal of Honor for excellence in teaching. She studied medicine so she could care for the sick poor who could not afford a doctor. Mother Theodore teaches us, as Cheryl just read, put yourself gently into the hands of providence. When do you put yourself into the hands of providence, gently or otherwise? Tonight, we'll have three different reflection times to just pause, thinking about whether what Mother Theodore has said. And if you'd like, take a journal, take a piece of paper, a pencil, and just a couple minutes to just jot for yourself or think for yourself what you're hearing yourself say. When do you put yourself into the hands of providence, gently or otherwise?
So I've chimed several times. Um, Annalie tells me that the chime may not be registering. So let me invite you to bring some closure to this reflection time as we continue listening to Mother Theodora's story. Coming to America. This is the path traced by Providence and I follow it, says Mother Theodora Guerin. And Judy has invited me to speak the words uh, in as much of my French as I can. Mother Theodore was assigned to America in 1840. She was chosen by Mother Mary and the Bishop of Le Mans, Jean Baptiste Bouvier, in Rouillet sur Loire, France, to accept the invitation of Bishop de la Hollandière of the Diocese of Vincennes, Indiana, to bring good news to the oppressed by opening missions there. She left her beloved home of France with five companion sisters, Sister St. Vincent Farragage, Sister Basilide Seneschal, Sister Olympiad Boyer, Sister Mary Xavier Leray, and Sister Mary Ligori Tierson, and traveled by ship, train, speedboat, canal, steamboat, excuse me, canal boat and horse-drawn carriage before finally, finally, finally arriving in the wilderness of Indiana in the United States. After hearing the words, come down sisters, you have arrived, which are words that many sisters of Providence and Providence um, associates and students say over and over again on days like this, come down sisters, you have arrived. The six women dedicated their mission to Mary and named it St. Mary of the Woods. And the seven French sisters, Sister St. Francis, joined them a year later. Pioneer life was hard for these French women. Mother Theodore waited for a new home to be built in the forest wilderness. She prepared to establish a community and challenged her sisters to respond to the urgent needs of the times. They set captives free by educating youth, establishing many schools and founding two orphanages. They healed the brokenhearted and comforted the sick by setting up two pharmacies to dispense free medicines to those who were economically poor. They worked to transform the existing social order of their day by opening an academy for girls and women, now known as St. Mary of the Woods College. They learned to cherish the woods and its herbs, trees, birds, lakes, and natural life surrounding them. Amazing. Mother Theodore tells us, this is the path traced by Providence and I follow it. Where is Providence leading you to see new life, meet new challenges, take new paths in your faith journey? Let's pause again to reflect quietly for a couple minutes on this question. I'll try the chime again to bring us back, but I'll also use my voice.
Let's bring some closure to our reflection time. The vision of providence. Grant, oh my God, that all who dwell in this house may love you much, may love one another, and may never forget why they came here, says Mother Theodore Guerin. Mother Theodore held on to her visions of providence and comforted her sisters, even in the midst of severe setbacks, storms at sea, fires that destroyed their barns and harvest, prejudice against Catholics, increasingly ill health, excommunication by the bishop, and deaths of loved ones. Yet, the sisters persisted. Mother Theodore and the other five Providence foundresses welcomed God's presence in their lives and placed themselves under the protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary the moment they arrived at the woods and entered the chapel. They were wise women whose gifts of love, mercy, and justice rooted their Providence community for the future. Today, the House of Providence has grown to become a community of Providence that is home to Sisters of Providence and Providence Associates who embrace the vision of Mother Theodore. Mother Theodore prays. Grant, O oh my God, that all who dwell in this house may love you much, may love one another, and may never forget why they came here. What visions do you hold on to, even in the midst of setbacks? Let's take some time to reflect on this question. Let's bring some closure to our reflective time. Think about what you've heard in Mother Theodore's story, what you've reflected on in the three times that we've had quiet time 
and questions. What words of Mother Theodora's speak to you today on your journey? So we bring all of these prayers and so, so many more, especially people who don't even know how to ask for healing. May they find healing. May we find healing when we need it. Gracious and loving divine providence, thank you. Mother Theodore, we thank you for your healing touch. Amen. Blessed be. Amen. Amen. And so we move to one of Mother Theodore's love, the loving of Eucharist. Mother Theodore loved the Eucharist. Her times of receiving this sacrament may have been for her the peak of her prayer and the depth of her love for God. In one of her instructions to her sisters, she tells them, how consoling is this mystery of the Eucharist? If we knew how to appreciate it, it would suffice to fortify and sustain us. Blessing the bread. Blessed are you, provident God, for giving us this mystery of the Eucharist, this banquet of love. We take, bless, and break, and eat this bread in memory of and in thanksgiving for the love we have known through Sister Mother Theodore Guerin. In thanksgiving for the love we have received and in thanksgiving for the love we have been inspired to give, May love, mercy, and justice increase. Take action. Let us put our prayers into action. Here are some possible ways. Choose one quote of St. Mother Theodore Guerin that you heard today and pray it every day for a week. Give service to a neighborhood soup kitchen, food pantry, or prison. Pray the novena to St. Mother Theodore Guerin for nine days. Order prayer cards, books, gift items from the Providence gift shop. Give thanks for unknown blessings. So let us go forth, giving thanks for holy and wise, courageous and determined women like St. Mother Theodore, who inspire us to face the challenges of our day. Let us go forth, committed to insisting, persisting and resisting even in the midst of setbacks. And let us go forth, to walk in providence with Mother Theodore Guerin, with the cosmos, with people of all lands and cultures, with one another. And let us go forth to respect and reverence unknown blessings of all creation. I mean. <laughs> Let us give